Hello, and welcome to the Voices of Latinx podcast. Hey, my name is Hector. What's up? My name is Mariana. What's up? My name is Sandra. And my name is Myra. And we really just want to talk about um, this research project we did last year, 2019, which was based off the Latinx community, right? Mm -hmm. And it really comes close to home because we're all considered part of the Latinx community. Yep. Well, speaking of, what is your favorite Latinx artist? Well, mine is Bad Bunny, um, just because he's so iconic, especially his song, Yo Pero Sola. It's amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it just represents so many other people and, you know, different types of audiences. So that's why I really love him. <laughs> I would, de so it's a group, and it's Banda El Recodo, and they hit, they hit home because growing up, whenever we would go visit our grandparents and stuff, they would play for the Christmas party. Um, so I got to see them almost every year for like five years straight. So ever since Dang, then, that's pretty cool. I keep that memory with me. Mm -hmm. I would have to say I'm going to add a female artist. I love Selena Quintanilla, um, even though she died way before I was born. But she's she's one of my favorite by far. Rest in power, Selena. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would have to go with Romeo Santos. Mm -hmm. um, so bachata. 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 Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Can y'all dance bachata? Oh yeah, of course. For sure. Un poquito. <laughs> yeah, so a little bit about me. Um I am I I live in Hickory, North Carolina, but my parents and I came from Mexico when I was two years old. So I'm from Guanajuato, La Ciudad de las Momias. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, I'm a first generation college student. And I'm the second one of my family to be going to college. So hopefully I'll graduate this coming year with a bachelor's degree in psychology with a minor's in um, sociology and anthropology. You two guys are seniors, right, son? Well, no. All, All the three, three of us. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The only junior. Wow. You're the only junior. I'm the only junior. <laughs> yeah. Hector. Well, dang. No, I kind of want to hear y'all's story first. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So for me... Um, I was born and raised in Spartanburg, which is why this whole research hits really close to home because I grew up with these people in a sense and I went to church with them. Um, but yeah, I'm the fourth one in my family to go to college. Um, my parents came from Jalisco and Michoacan to California and then to South Carolina where I was born. And yeah, I'll be the fourth one to graduate out of my family, which is a really big deal. Um, and it'll be with a finance degree. That's awesome. Nice, nice. Your your parents must be really proud of y'all. <laughs> <clears throat> they try. Yeah. Um. And I'm Myra, and I'm also um from Mexico. I'm from Jalisco. Me and my family, and um, we also came to the U.S. um when I was just a baby. Um. We currently live in Charleston, South Carolina, and um. Luckily, I was able to become a Golden Door Scholar, which helped me get into uh, Wofford College. Um, and I am majoring in psychology and um, also with Spanish and then minoring in business. Um, yeah, so can't wait to graduate, but also don't want to because then, you know, life happens and masters and maybe your PhD, so. Vale. Y'all really about to graduate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what about you, you Hector? Story? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just a year behind. I'm a junior. Um, I am majoring in bio, philosophy, and Spanish. The triple major? Yeah. What? Yeah. Dang. That's hard. But I think that's why I'm here, um, and specifically the research. Um, just like the philosophy department really kind of drove me towards that mm -hmm. community-based learning aspect. Mm -hmm. um, also that I'm a Bonner Scholar, so like working in the community was no problem. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about this uh, research that we did. It was most definitely community-based. Um, did we interview a lot of parents? I think it was mostly youth, right? I would say like 30% parent. 30% parent. 20. But yeah. Mara, do you know the uh, partner organizations? that we worked with? Yeah, so we were actually working with the Mary Black Foundation, and um, one of the other ones was SAM, the Spartanburg Academic Movement, mm -hmm. and um, I believe some public schools as well. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Um, 
I remember we did a bunch of interviews and a bunch of observations. Mm -hmm. Y'all want to talk a little, bit, a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I'll say how we got these interviews was basically like through our friends mm -hmm. or people that we would see, whether it was at church or at El Supermercado, just any any interview that we could get. And it was mostly people around our age group. Mm -hmm. What type of questions did you ask, Mariana? So, yeah, some of the questions were like, what is a typical day? What do you do out of school? Um, yeah, what, what, kind, what type of activities do you do? You do or, or do you even do any activities outside of school? Yeah. Maida, would you say this is more like focused on well-being? Yeah, I mean, in a general sense, it has to do with mental health, with physical health, and even sexual reproduction, and um, just having conversations in fi with families and the youth in general. Um, so it's very interesting to get a wide variety of um, generations and um, age groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I personally found a lot of these interviews very relatable, mm -hmm. just because, you know, I think we all had similar experiences, mm -hmm. and, you know, Latinx culture, I think, has been somewhat consistent across mm -hmm. the board. Yeah, I definitely agree. I I feel like, I mean, I've talked about this before, um, where sometimes you you find a clash between both the American, American culture and the Hispanic culture and trying to deal with um, just conflicts that comes up with that. And a lot of those conflicts came across in the interviews. Because we are all Latinx here, I think that we can all relate to in a certain degree with these experiences. Our culture is really, really similar. And I think that the voices that we heard from the parents and from the youth just really captured our attention because at some point in their stories, it was also our story. Yeah. No, that's a great point how it kind of became our story because as we're interviewing these people, whether it be in English or Spanish, you could definitely feel that emotion come in because like you said it's the same culture so the same ideologies you know going to church and all that stuff and how just how we're brought up that we can all agree mm -hmm. that at some point we felt like we were living in the same shoes basically mm -hmm. yeah and I think that kind of goes with our um, approach to how we kind of um, interviewed people not necessarily interviewing people in quotations but uh, with the semi-structured um, interview, you can say it was mostly to be a conversation, to kind of listen to people and not only listen to them, but also share their stories and their voices so that community partners can also do work that is not only beneficial to what they think that the community needs, but what we really need, what is actually going to make a difference. I think you bring up a great point, Mara. The methodology here was it's really simple once you start like interviewing but it's really hard when you try to learn it I guess mm -hmm. um, I, uh, the philosophy department or Dr. Dinkins really said that it's called phenomenon phenomena. <laughs> phenomenological yeah phenomenology <laughs> that's how you say it um, yeah phenomenology and you know that has I think opened a lot of doors into which our interviewees just kind of gave us their experiences. So this research was actually done um, in Spartanburg, South Carolina at Wofford College um, with the report out of school time for Latinx youth, a qualitative research study in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Um, and our essential question that we were asking was what does out of school time look like for you if we're talking or interviewing some youth and then um, what is out of school time for your children and youth in your household for families and parents. Our partner organization SAM presented us with quantitative data and what we were in charge of mainly was kind of collecting that qualitative data because they had the numbers but they didn't necessarily know why or they didn't necessarily have the voices of the Latinx um, community. So they kind of wanted to just, for us to, to be there and, and speak to the community. So basically they just wanted to, they just wanted us to contextualize the data. Yeah, and so throughout this um, podcast, what we'll do is that each episode will be based off of one of our themes from the reports um, and 
within these episodes, we'll have and share um, experiences and voices of the community members that we interviewed. Um, and we'll also add our own experiences of our own where we resonate with the voices as Latinx um, people as well. Um, yeah, we'll basically have a big conversation. That was about it. Yeah. So yeah, we just want to say thank you to um, Wofford College and to specifically Dr. B.R. and Dr. Dinkins for allowing us to, to do this undergraduate research and to be part of it. Yep. Until next time. Ciao. Hasta luego. Adios. Dale.